Welcome to Profile. I'm your host today, Paula Hersey, and we are with folks from Capabilities and Endicott College. There was a new program for applied behavior analysis that was launched last year. Back with me is Dr. Michael Dorsey from Endicott College. Hello. And Clinical Director from Capabilities, Brian Blair. Hello. Welcome back, gentlemen. Good Thank to be here. you. Nice to be back. Great. So there's a, a really cool program, graduate program. We don't get many of those on Cape Cod. And Capabilities and Endicott College um, kind of joined, joined forces last year to try to bring that graduate program right to the people that need it most. So give us a little bit of background on the program itself and how the program started and kind of is flourishing now into its second, um, I guess, cohort, right? You've got a second yeah. cohort coming up in September. Actually, Endicott began the process about 10 years ago. And if you know where Beverly, Massachusetts is, it's basically you can't get there from here. It's, it's way up on the North Shore, sort of like going out onto Cape Cod because it's Cape Ann. Um, and what we realized very early on when we started the, the ABA program, ABA being short for Applied Behavior Analysis, when we started the program we realized right away that it was going to be really difficult to recruit people to come to Beverly to take courses. So we began to affiliate with a number of partner programs, sort of around Greater Boston. So Melmart New England, which is up in Andover, now the May Institute, which is down in Randolph, Crossroads and Natick. So we were sort of going around. And then um, Brian uh, is one of our doctoral students, uh, took a job at Capabilities. And what we realized was we had no foothold on Cape Cod. And there's no one else down here doing it. Applied behavior analysis is sort of the go-to treatment for kids with autism. Okay. Um, there certainly are a number of kids diagnosed on the autism spectrum on the Cape. Uh, but no place really for individuals to go get training uh, to do that kind of work. Okay. So we contacted Brian and talked to his, um, the people that work there and run the program, and um, it worked. It worked. So Brian, this has been just about a year that you guys sat here on the set and talked about launching this program. What did you find in the last year with this first cohort of, of students? Well, like uh, Mike was saying, we've seen a lot of demand. Um, you know, first we weren't really sure what type of student would be interested, um, you know, where, where they would be coming from, but it was interesting to see that the makeup of that first cohort, some have come all the way from Plymouth, some have, most are, are living on Cape, which was really good that we were able to offer that to them on Cape. Right. Most of them said that the convenience, uh, you know, after uh, work, uh, school meeting, you know, uh, course meetings were, were, was what right. people were really looking for. Um, and the, 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 the dynamic of the, the first cohort was interesting in that they were all able to learn things from each other. So some of the more experienced, um, you know, people that have been around a while that have been working in the field that were waiting for a graduate program, they were able to bring their experiences where some of the younger students who were maybe just out of um, undergrad were able to bring different, uh, different kind of world uh, view to it. So they learned a lot from each other. It's been a very successful couple of semesters. We're continuing on. We're going to start the intensive practicum here in the fall which is the next phase of, you know, they, they did some of the coursework, now they're actually gonna do some hands-on work in the field in clinical settings. So this is uh, interesting to me that there is a, a balance of different ages. We always hear that there's no young professionals on Cape Cod or mm. there's no old no. people that actually work, but there was a blend of, um, I guess, generational uh, yeah. folks within this um, graduate program. Yeah, it, it is, it's very much a blend. Uh, there, there's a wide range of different ages of the students in the program, okay. and now we're, you know, we're here to talk today a bit about s launching a second cohort. Right. You know, we're going to start a new group beginning in September. Uh, we've already got people registering for classes. Uh, the word's getting out there, right. uh, so it's a good thing. So. The program itself, I mean, this isn't, you know, something that you take for six weeks and you're done. Um, this is a really intense graduate program that really, do they all do all the work here on the Cape or do they eventually have to go to Endicott? No, everything's done here. Wow. Everything's done here. The people, with the exception of their intensive practicum, right. and then that's basically wherever they work. So if you work in the Plymouth Public Schools, you do your practicum experience there. Okay. And you have an on-site supervisor 
that kind of keeps an eye on you and helps guide you there. And then we've got somebody uh, that they log on and do online group supervision. Okay. So they all come together and they meet with a group supervisor once a week, uh, which is a really good thing and it works out really well. Right. So the um, uh, practicum, this is starting in September. So this is really intense for folks. How do you think people are going to balance that and work at the same time? Well, it is part of their work. It is part of the work. So it's, just it's what you said they, is yeah. right where they say, that's They're, they're an employee of capabilities. They're an employee of the Plymouth Public Schools, um, of children making strides wherever it is they work. So it's that's nothing where additional they in the work. It's the work that they do. It's what you do at the work. Okay. It's implementing the, the science of human behavior, applied behavior analysis okay. in your work site so that it really sort of gives you a perspective of doing things in a very empirical, scientific, uh, person-centered kind of a way mm -hmm. to where you're helping people, but you're also gaining the experience and you've got a senior person looking over your shoulder mm -hmm. saying, okay, now what did you learn in class? How are you gonna do this? Let's design mm -hmm. a program. How are you gonna take data? All right. of those kinds of things. So how does capabilities um, kind of fit into that? As I, I would imagine there's a few students that are um, employed by capabilities. Yeah, we have a couple of students now, um, and it's, it's new for capabilities. Some other agencies um, have already had kind of applied behavior analysis programs or, or, or you know, behavior plans um, that, that they've been implementing throughout the years. They just kind of wanted to formalize it a little bit. Capabilities is, is growing and developing um, new programs and new support strategies uh, based on uh, the principles of ABA. So we did have three students who were current employees who were, were really excited about the program. Some have been waiting several years for a program like this where they wow. wouldn't have to leave Cape or it was cost effective, good schedule, so they were really excited about it. We'll be, like I said, we'll be starting the practicum in uh, September and like Mike was saying, the, the skills that we'll be working on are things that are necessary for them to learn as professionals, but it's also going to benefit capabilities and the people that we support and serve uh, because the, the skills that they'll be able to, to, to implement throughout the day and you know they'll be able to train others in the same skills at the end of the, the practicum, those are things that are necessary, not just for children with autism, but for anybody that's trying to learn a new skill or to work on a challenging behavior, uh, prepare for a vocational setting, all of those things, uh, you know, you, we can develop strategies based on ABA and we need the professionals because I can't do it myself. So we need right. more professionals that, that can do yeah. that day in and day out. Right. Do you see that sharing within the workplace of knowledge now where people are so engaged in their coursework that they're starting to share out more of that with their their uh, their coworkers? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, something like ABA, it's something that you can learn some basic strategies and you can see change almost immediately. Um, you can start changing behavior with, you know, with proper supervision and proper training, but because the, the, you can see the effects so immediately, I think people do sort of say, this is something I'm interested in, this is something I want to learn more about. Even if I don't get the BCBA or go through the graduate program, I want to have a conversation or I want to, you know, talk to the clinical director. I want to, uh, you know, work on this project with somebody else. I want to help with data collection or data analysis. Um, not everybody's going to be into it as, as much as others, but it does. Right. I, I do find that the colleagues of the people that are in the program are excited about it too because it, it's bringing a slightly different way of looking at working with people with disabilities. That's great. So let's talk a little bit about applied behavior analysis. It seems like a lot of words. I like the ABA. That's it's a only little three. bit. It's <laughs> only three, but it's lots of syllables. Yeah. So um, we talk data collection. We talk, you know, being able to change behaviors fairly quickly. Really, what is applied behavior? Not behavioral, but behavior analysis. Well, we like to talk about it as being the science of human behavior. Okay. There are a lot of there are a lot of professions out there that claim to be able to. Let's just talk about autism for a minute. Okay. It's an easy one to sort of to get your head wrapped around. There are a lot of um, professionals out there who have various approaches to telling parents or other people, you know, I can help the child with autism. The problem is very few of them are actually evaluated scientifically, empirically, if you will. There's not really that sort of really evidence-based way of evaluating what you're doing to make sure that what you're selling to these parents is actually going to have a positive impact. So we really apply behavior analysis uh, begins with trying to understand why people do what they do, what are the reinforcers that are maintaining their behavior within the natural environment, 
and how to use that information to help teach them in a positive way, maybe more appropriate ways to behave, more effective ways to teach them how to um, tie their shoe or cross the street or work in a restaurant, effective ways so we can actually take data, evaluate those procedures, make sure that they really work and we're not just sort of making it up as we go along. So it's, it's evidence-based, it's scientific, and it's the science of human behavior. Right. So we talked about children. So how does this apply with capabilities who are servicing um, adults with disabilities and adults with autism? We've seen a spike of that at, at capabilities over the years as autism is, is definitely um, a, a lot of your uh, participant base now. Yeah, and it's not all that different. It's, you know, it ends up being the, the skills that you work on. So maybe as a child, you're maybe a little bit more focused on some of the academic skills, some of the you know, readiness skills, ready to learn skills, those types of things. Communication is still uh, big for kids. It's also pretty big for, for adults too. But right. you know, adults, you're looking at more functional life skills, how to live independently so that okay. we can fade as much support as, as possible. I think everybody's interested in teaching people skills that, that make them more independent. We, we all love our independence, and I don't think right. anybody is any different. So they, they, you know, those are the skills that we kind of focus on. Um, when it comes to autism, we are seeing more and more referrals from different agencies or from the state, um, as, some, as well as some of the residential schools and, and other schools. Uh, you know, as soon as you turn 22, you start looking for adult services, and we are seeing more and more referrals for adults with autism. Again, you know, the diagnosis is similar um, across the lifespan. You just you just work on different skills. Communication is really the, the thing that we try to focus most on, um, and ABA has shown that with the right strategies, a systematic approach to teaching communication skills, we can kind of break down those those barriers. Yeah. So that really comes back to employment skills. Right. Because communication is so critical mm -hmm. in any workplace setting that, and you guys really, uh, Capabilities has this track record of being able to put people in jobs that are meaningful, um, and now they're gaining those skills as well in the communications. That's yeah, you know, just because you can't um, communicate vocally with words, there right. are other ways to communicate with, you know, sign language or or picture systems that uh, children and adults with autism will right. often use. Uh, but if, if we don't continue to teach them, you know, if, if they know certain words when they're younger, they're going to need to learn different types of ways to communicate in different settings when they're adults. Great. So let's talk about the new session starting up. You're excited. I am. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's great. I mean, as far as I know, and I could be wrong, it is the only graduate program that's being taught on CAPE. I don't think there's anybody offering anything in business or other, other areas. Um, so I think it's really um, something special. But I've been doing this, I've been in this profession for 40 years. Um, and I really truly believe that applied behavior analysis is an answer to be able to approach things in a very careful, planful way, uh, and to be able to help other people. So the the outreach for these the, this new class it starts. Are, are you full already? Or? Uh, no, no, we're so uh, the the registration process is open. So that you know they okay. we will give them some websites here in a couple of seconds. Yeah. Um, but there's uh, yeah, so you can register today. Uh, classes will start in early October, first week of October. We'll get the schedules out. It's it's an intensive. Uh, program, so I, th I hope everybody does know that there there are very few breaks. You don't take a semester off, but in 18 months or so, you can uh, finish your coursework, master's degree, be be prepared to sit for the board certification exam, and become licensed in Massachusetts as an applied behavior anal analyst. 18 months. And about 18 months. 18 yep. months. As long yeah, as long as you don't take any breaks. And you know, the first cohort, um, the first couple of semesters were a little rough, kind of get settling into the new routine. Sure. But they're in it now, and they're ready to to finish up in about a year. So. You know, you, you do see the light at the end of the tunnel, even right. at, the, at that first class, because you know it's not going to take three or four years. We'll be done, and the coursework continues to be offered. Endicott has no plans on taking any breaks. It's, it's going, it, it will be offered. So yeah, just um, you know, you can apply. Um, you can either go to the Endicott College website, or you can go to the Capabilities website. Those are probably the best places. You can contact me directly, and I can get some more information out as well. And we Endicott makes it very easy for you to get started. You go on our website. You fill out what takes about 10 minutes worth of questions about yourself. You pay, I think, a $50 registration fee, uh, which is one of only two fees you pay the entire time you're in the program. Yeah. There's a registration and a graduation, and that's it. Other than that, the tuition is very reasonable. Once you fill out that application, you're good to go for the first semester. 
You can get in, you can take your first two classes, and then through that first semester, you've got to do some other things. You've got to take either the graduate record exam or the Miller's analogy test. You've got to get some letters of recommendation, but you've got a whole semester to get that stuff done so that by the end of the first semester and you're going into the second, now you're a fully accepted student and you're good to go. You can go, go through the program and graduate. So if they've been slacking all summer, there's still time is what you're saying, right? <laughs> there is. Yeah. There is. That, that has been, you know, as, as I see uh, Labor Day coming up uh, this week, basically, this coming weekend, um, you know, the summer has gone by yeah. far too quickly. So as, as folks start to learn more about this program, what are the hopes for the future here? I mean, you know, autism is one of those um, disabilities out there that seems to be I guess maybe more because it's in the media more, but there does seem to be more people on the spectrum that are, are getting noticed. So how important really is this to have a cadre of, of people trained in this applied behavior analysis? Well, the United States Surgeon General has gone on record as saying that ABA is the treatment for autism. Okay. Um, there are a lot of really smart people doing a lot of basic research, MIT, Harvard, places like that, trying to understand genomes and what could be done and is there anything that we can do to predict it or avoid it. But right now, we've got these people living amongst us and we've got to figure out a way to help them maximize their life. Um, and that's what we're trying to do, is have the number of staff available uh, that are necessary in order to serve these people. Um, and, and on the capability side, um, you know, obviously this is an attraction for people to come work at capabilities, but we also have a bunch of other agencies here on the Cape that deal with autism and some of the um, spectrum disorders. So where do you see this, I guess, employment piece come up the most? Is, is it on the floor of your uh, programs or is it more broad people thinking, saying, geez, you know, maybe I should get a master's in this? Or is this something grassroots that you're seeing? I, it's a, I think it's a little bit of everything. So okay. it all depends on the agency that you're currently working for. You know, okay. the, the, the world we live in now, nobody ever works for the same agency for, you know, the, well, some people do, but, you know, it's, and once you get that master's degree, opportunities just open for you, whether they're on Cape, off Cape, whether you want to move with your family, you know, there are so many opportunities. There are definitely opportunities. We were actually speaking with a colleague this morning. She noticed um, an ad in the local newspaper for or hiring BCBAs. So there is demand on Cape for okay. the BCBA uh, uh, credential. So that's, it was very encouraging for us to hear that. Uh, we know that there's demand worldwide, especially, you know, in the, in the U.S. for this growing need for, for children and adults with autism, but we know that there's demand on CAPE as well. Different agencies are going to kind of strategize and, and, and look at different ways to, to, to use this resource, and they may okay. develop new positions, or people may just kind of roll into a current position, and they'll, they'll just take on added responsibilities, but every agency does it a little bit differently. One of the national uh, professional organizations did a survey not too long ago and found that 97% of the people who completed the board certification process were employed immediately after graduation. 97%. 97%. And the 3% that didn't, didn't want a full-time job. They were right. looking to do something else with their lives. Right. So essentially, it's 100% employment. You go through one of these programs, you pass the board certification exam, you get your license to practice in Massachusetts, and you will be offered a job. It's that much in demand. So this 18 months really does put them in the position to pass this board position. Absolutely. 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 And if there are any uh, potential students out there that are looking for just maybe getting their BCBA, they may already have a master's degree, that's an option as well. We can offer coursework yeah. so that they okay. can get their, their board certification and license. So if you've got a master's in psychology, um, education, any level of it, special ed, regular okay. ed, whatever, you, you can come to us and instead of taking a whole master's program, you can take six courses. That prepare you Do your for practicum, that. do your practicum. Uh, we offer a free exam prep course that they do at the end. Uh, doesn't cost them a, a penny. Uh, gets them ready to take that board certification exam. So six courses in an exam prep and you're off to the races. Wow. That's kind of cool for Cape Cod. It is. <laughs> so, um, how about those websites again? 
So the capability, capabilities.org will have a, probably right on the front page in the next couple of days a link okay. to it. And then Endicott College, they can just uh, search for ABA programs there. And okay. it's pretty easy to find. Yeah. And if they want to contact me directly, it's just bblair at capabilities.org. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for coming back and talking about this. It sparked my interest last year when I heard about it, specifically, again, because of the, the, the challenges that Cape Cod faces for anyone for education. Um, you know, we do have some undergrad um, programs. BSU has come here. Suffolk has come here yeah. over the years. Um, but those master programs, I can remember my sister actually hauling off Cape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, it, yeah. and it wears yeah. on you, especially yeah. after a full day of work, because very rarely do people go through their master's program unemployed yeah <laughs> yeah so um, thanks again Brian and Thank doctor thanks uh, for having us this is the graduate program of applied behavior analysis offered at uh, capabilities actually in your building yeah. um, for that information on their website capabilities.org this is Paula Hersey and this is profile <laughs>